All right, guys, I think just right at the top here, I'm going to be super honest with you. There is a lot going on today. There's a lot going on at the Daily Wire, and there's a lot that went on over the weekend. And I can honestly say that this is the first time since producing this podcast that I genuinely don't want to do the show. (laughs) I'm just so frustrated and so angry about things that are going on that the only way that I can do this show is to be completely honest with you guys and in the form of announcing to you exactly what is happening behind the scenes and hopeful that it really just inspires a conversation because I, I question even being on this platform at this moment. So we will talk about that and much more today coming up on Candace Owens. So I don't think that this will come as a shock to any person that has been paying attention to all that has gone on at The Daily Wire over the last couple of months. Obviously, my colleague Matt Walsh had his channel demonetized on YouTube, and the reasons for him being demonetized were a bit spurious, to be honest. They kind of did it overnight. They they said they had flagged many videos, and essentially, I feel that he was targeted uh, because he has been hitting out on gender issues. He has been talking about women being women and men being men, and he believes uh, in biology and biological reality. And so for whatever reason, I think after I, um, What is a Woman came out, they really began to focus on his channel. Well, very recently, we found out that YouTube is also placing some focus on my channel as well as Michael Knowles' channel. And we were basically given an option to delete every video that I've ever done pertaining to gender in which I have accurately gendered someone, which is now (laughs) quite crazy to say this, accurately gendering someone is now known as misgendering someone. And that is considered hateful conduct. So you may be noticing right now that my channel had a lot more videos on it uh, last Friday, and now a lot of those videos are missing. I feel, to be completely honest with you, completely conflicted about this. I feel that it is capitulating to stay on a platform that is demanding that we lie. And it is shocking to me that any platform, any business, whether it is a private business or a public business, can compel people to say things that are not true. Actually, Michael Knowles said something, if you guys happened to have caught Uh, the Twitter audio that we did last week when we were promoting What is a Woman. Michael Knowles said something that I thought was really, really important and heavy to consider. He said, the question is not whether or not we have free speech. Maybe perhaps I could deal with a platform that didn't have free speech. But the question is whether or not we are allowed to say true things. And that's where we're at right now in America. Think about that. Are we allowed to say true things? Maybe I can't freely say things. But am I allowed to say something that is abundantly true? Are you allowed to say in America that Candace Owens is a black woman? And if the answer to that is no, then we need to fully acknowledge that we are losing our civilization. What I can say to you is that the answer to that is definitively no on YouTube. You are not allowed to say true things, depending how it makes somebody feel. So you cannot acknowledge, for example, that I am a black woman if I wake up one day and I decide that that's not how I feel on the inside. Maybe today I say, I feel like a Hispanic male. And then you make a video and you say, Candace Owens is a black woman and YouTube will support me. They will take down your video and they will penalize you. And if you do that repeatedly, if you keep saying, no, Candace Owens is a black female, they will demonetize you. They will risk your livelihood. If your livelihood has been established by the money that you make on YouTube, YouTube will target you and they will take it down. Now, I cannot personally capitulate to that, like forgetting any standards, forgetting anybody else, just me as a human being, as a Christian woman, as somebody who is a patriot and who very much believes in free speech, and I would say probably most importantly as a mother that understands what the implications are of this discussion that we are having, what the implications are for my young children, for my two-year-old son, and for my 11-month-year-old daughter. If we are adults and we are too afraid to acknowledge reality because we are afraid that we are going to lose money, 
I, I can't have that level of cowardice because that means that when my children are of school age, they will have to deal with the consequences of my cowardice. I can't do it. It, it, it really impacts me. So the question becomes, how, how do we fight them, right? How, how do we fight them? Because the truth is, is that these people do have a lot of power. And if they just begin to wipe away conservative pages and we say, oh, we're just going to go on these lesser established platforms, we won't have the same reach. And reach is obviously critical. We have obviously been able to use our reach to affect great change. Obviously, you probably saw this over the last couple of days with the success of What is a Woman, which I think is up to something like 150 million views on Twitter because Matt agrees with me. He cannot do that. He cannot morally sit here and lie to people because of how they feel on the inside. Well, I think that for me, especially considering that it is Pride Month, I am going to re-examine my viewpoints on how I talk about this topic and maybe abide by YouTube's policy fully in a way that allows me to rest my head on the pillow. And so I think that the best way to do that is by doing what they have asked for, you know, allow trans people to exist, to acknowledge that trans people have a right to exist, to acknowledge that they should be platformed and that they should be allowed to share their story. And that is what I intend to use my platform for for this entire month. I'm feeling tremendously proud of the LGBTQ community, and I want to contribute to that conversation by revealing to you the truth, their, their brave journeys and the things that they are going through. You know, I've realized that it may actually be the circumstance that maybe you were just simply born into the wrong body. And my former language of suggesting that going through these procedures to change your body, I think I described it as mutilation, is, is wrong. How could I say that? I'm not a trans person that is existing. We need to hear from trans people about their journey. So let's provide first and foremost a person who goes by Adia, a platform here with my audience to describe Adia's procedure that Adia went through. Take a listen. Years ago, I got gender reaffirming surgery. Here's a honest update do i regret it short answer is yes don't get me wrong i got it done twice it looks barbie why do i regret it well because i will never be able to live a normal life after the surgery you have to start dilating to keep the space they gave you you start from doing it four times a day to once a week for the rest of your life i was fine with that see the problem is i had major complications and now for some reason i need to do it every single day now, obviously, I've had relations, and girls, we all know, guys don't f know what to do. So it's not really worth it to me. The problem is, I cannot stop. If I stop, it's going to close up and create a bubble. And that bubble could literally create an infection that could... The two options here are, I dilate for the rest of my life, or I get it removed surgically. Surgery goes for 70000 and I don't want to go through that again, so I guess I'm dilating. Thank you very much, Adia, for sharing your story, especially during a month where that's what we should be doing, sharing trans stories. And Adia is not the only one. And in fact, I want to show you some images because you might be a parent that is sitting at home and sharing how your son was born a son, but then you realize that actually it was a daughter. Or maybe it's the reverse. Maybe you gave birth to what you thought was a daughter. And then one day looked, that daughter looked up at you and said, actually, mommy, I'm a boy. And you believe that in your heart to be true. And so I want to share the information of your journey personally, what you are going through and what your child who may decide as a young adult to go through this procedure to have his outside match his inside might go through. So this is an image and I want to first say viewer discretion is very much advised on this of what that procedure looks like. Now you are probably cringing a bit, but this is just surgical, guys. Don't think too bad. I don't want to think too badly about this, but yes, what you are looking at is somebody's upper thigh that is being carved out in those first two images. Obviously, that is what you are looking at. And then that upper thigh is being used to construct a penis. So you've carved out a thigh. Sometimes you can also use a bicep. And that's what you're doing. You are creating a penis. And I've learned more about this in the interest of, of pride and, and sharing 
with people what actually takes place with these sorts of procedures, procedures, these prosthetic penises. Some of these penises include an inflatable implant that involves a silicone pump that is inserted into the scrotum, which can be squeezed to generate an erection. So that seems to me to be what people might want, obviously, when you talk about the potential for your livelihood thereafter. And I'm going to have to warn you that a big study was just done by Women's College Hospital in Ontario, and they found this year that more than half of trans women who had bottom surgery were in so much pain years later that they needed medical attention. For trans men who often have a mechanical device, as I just shared with you, implanted, the studies suggest a fifth needed the implant to be removed within a year. Now, obviously, these operations have garnered some political debate. But again, the idea here is just that trans youth are depressed and we shouldn't focus too much on the downside, right? Is that, am I learning this right, YouTube? We shouldn't focus too much on the downside and we should just talk about the upside. A large study that was done last year found that more than a third of penis implant procedures to give an erection had complications so bad that further surgery was required. Nine months after the procedure, more than a fifth of patients had to have their devices removed either due to infection or mechanical failures. So here's the thing. I'm going to include these sources because they are, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I will include these sources and these links in the description of this particular YouTube video because I'm feeling pride. I feel proud. I want to show you guys these images because it is Pride Month and the parents that are supporting this should be proud because even if these procedures fail and even if they require further surgery and even if people like Adia are telling you that they regret their procedures, it doesn't matter because we just need to all do our part and push this ideology. I'm going to show you one more image in the interest of pride. Here you are. Again, viewer discretion is advised because we are looking at surgical procedures. And this one is a phalloplasty. So, yeah, I think it's really wrong when conservatives, evil conservatives that don't understand people's feelings, refer to this sort of stuff as mutilation. Because even if things go wrong, it's really about how you feel on the inside. And that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. It's finally summer here in Nashville, and when the weather is nice out, I love to grill out in the backyard with my family. Right now, we're loving Omaha Steak's top sirloin with scalloped potatoes. The steak is some of the best I have ever had. It's juicy, it's tender, and it is aged to perfection. Omaha Steaks offers great packages with steaks that are hand-cut and delivered, plus gourmet meats, meals, and so much more. Omaha Steaks is offering customizable Father's Day packages that include bacon-wrapped filet mignons, boneless chicken breasts, burgers, and many more of our favorites like top sirloin steak. This is going to make the perfect gift for my husband. Make this Father's Day unforgettable with Omaha Steaks. Right now, my listeners can get $30 off qualifying orders with promo code CANDICE at omahasteaks.com. Create your own package or choose from a variety of those hand-selected packages to fit all of your needs. That's omahasteaks.com, promo code CANDICE. Minimum order is required. See site for details. All right, now it's time for some topics du jour. Man, oh man, Jamie Foxx. I don't know even know where to begin with this because this feels like I feel a part of this journey in many ways. Obviously, you guys know I am producing The Shot in the Dark. I have been producing it uh, off of a Daily Wire platform. Now it's on the Daily Wire platform. I am, I don't know if this needs to be deemed a passion, but I'm extremely passionate about bodily autonomy. And it was very weird for me when conservatives and liberals alike were suddenly in lockstep uh, encouraging people to get an experimental vaccine. It just seemed very strange to me. And then people like me who were sensible and said, I'm not going to, it was like a patriotic call. They tried to frame it like a patriotic call. Do your part, roll up your sleeve and get this shot. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. You should never, ever, ever put something in body in your body that you are uncomfortable with because you are under duress. If it is because of a job, leave the job. It's that simple. You only have 
your own health, right? You're not going to get your health back if it deteriorates, if you get some lifelong illness. So it's interesting to me that money compelled people to do things that they were uncomfortable with. I have people in my family, in my immediate family, that were injured from this vaccine severely. Severely. We'll never have the same quality of life ever again, despite me pleading with them not to get this vaccine uh, and to wait for it. And obviously, by the way, and speaking of topics that we weren't allowed to talk about on YouTube, I remember the peer pressure campaign for all YouTubers to remain mum because they decided that you were not allowed to at all say anything but to encourage people to roll up their sleeves and to get this vaccine. And many people suffered the consequences. Well, we can't say they suffered the consequences per se because it's all hearsay. But remarkably, a bunch of young, healthy people in Hollywood are already experiencing things like face paralysis and brain clots. So before we get to Jamie Foxx, let me remind you Justin Bieber, whose face just magically went paralyzed. And he was on tour, which would signal to me that he definitively got the COVID-19 shot. But again, that is sheer speculation. We can also just assume that a healthy young kid in his 20s just randomly gets a paralyzed face. Take a listen. This syndrome called uh, um, Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And it is from this virus that um, attacks the nerve in my ear and my facial nerves and has caused my face to have paralysis. As you can see, this eye is not blinking. Well, lightning struck twice in the Bieber household because his wife was then also impacted with a droopy face and a blood clot in her brain. Take a listen. When I went to respond, I couldn't speak. The right side of my face started drooping. I couldn't get a sentence out. Everything was coming out like, not even jumbled, just like couldn't get any of the words out. So obviously immediately I thought I was having a stroke, like a full blown stroke. Um, he thought I was having a stroke, so right away he asked for somebody to please call 911 and get a doctor. Are we normalizing that? Are we normalizing people that are in their 20s having, thinking that they're having strokes, having face paralysis? Is that normal now? Are we doing that as well as young kids having heart attacks? Are we just going to pretend that we didn't do anything medically? <laughs> throughout COVID that could be contributing to that. Okay, cool. I want to play by YouTube's rules. They just all are randomly having this stuff happen to them. Of course, that's just two examples. Well, Jamie Foxx was admitted to the hospital because of a medical complication. That's all the public was told on Thursday, April 11th. And we were never given any specific details on his current health status. He had been replaced in a movie that he was working on. There's been a lot of speculation. Like I said, it was no way to say that this happened or it didn't happen. It was pure speculation uh, surrounding various things people were saying that he was going through. And his daughter initially spoke out and said that he's out of the hospital. Rumors are running wild. The media is running wild. He was playing pickleball yesterday. Thank you, everybody, for your prayers and support. We're excited to announce something else in the next week or two. Well, she made that statement. And then I would say about a week later, a journalist by the name of A.J. Benza claimed that he spoke to a source that was extremely close to Fox. And here is what he heard about the situation. Take a listen. I had somebody in the room who let me know that Jamie had a blood clot in his brain after he got the shot. He did not want the shot, but the movie he was on, he was pressured to get it. What I found out from the man in the room was that uh, the blood clot in the brain caused him at that point to be partially paralyzed and blind. So I will make an assessment based on what is not being said. His family has spoken to the media. This obviously went viral. Everybody is reporting on this on the left and the right. And the family has declined to comment thus far. I would say just using common sense, 
that if this was my family and a person went out and told a viral lie that I suffered a blood clot in my brain because of the COVID-19 vaccine, we would immediately issue a statement. We would condemn the journalist and my family would call them a liar and say that it's just none of your business. But they seem remarkably hush, hush about this and they are choosing to say nothing. So um, their silence seems as though they are suggesting that there is some veracity to this claim. We are all holding our breath. Uh, to see whether or not Jamie Foxx speaks out, especially because he's saying that he did not want to do this. This is what they were doing. They were demanding that in order for people to make money and to have a livelihood in the same way that with children and vaccines, they say, if you want your child to go to school, even if you're uncomfortable with your child getting X amount of shots in one go, hence my series, A Shot in the Dark, they say you have to do it, right? So you're not free to make these decisions. No, you are making these decisions under duress. And it is so important for people to remember that you only have one body, right? You cannot magically get your health back. And I am genuinely hoping, I I love Jamie Foxx, I love his work. I am hoping that he makes a full recovery as Haley Bieber has done and as Justin Bieber has done. Um, And if he doesn't, I then will instead pray and hope that he gets the courage to tell the truth because there will be an insurmountable amount of pressure with someone with that much influence to stay hush, to say mum about what happened to him. And if he does speak out about what happened to him, he will also face an immediate backlash. People will call him a liar. This is what happens when you are vax injured. I was vax injured from the Gardasil vaccine. I spoke about that and people pretended, like many other people that that suffered consequences from having that vaccine, that you're a liar that there's no way we can know that it's related to this. Um, Very scary times that we're living in when people can't even talk about what they have experienced, especially when it's something that is so horrific and that experience is only taking place because they are complying with peer pressure. So again, we do not know yet from anybody in his family that there's any veracity to the claims that are being made by AJ Benza, but what we can say is that they have not disputed the claims. So obviously we have been following this Target campaign or rather the anti-Target campaign that's been going on since they made the genius decision to sell Tuck swimwear, Tuck friendly swimwear. And obviously it has warranted a response from the consumer. Mother's just going, okay, you know what? I think I was okay when you had these rainbow displays, but this seems like it's something else. Well, They have lost, as we reported at the end of last week, at the end of last week, it was $13 billion in market value, plus their stock had been downgraded. And now their former vice chairman, Gerald Storch, speaking out about this very costly mistake. And here's what he had to say. Look, I've never seen a case where one item, that tuck swimsuit, that's really what made the difference versus the competitors. That's where the big mistake was made. Well, my people there that I've talked to here who work in product development, they go, how do they get past the meeting? You know, how do they agree? Yeah, let's put that in the assortment. You know, the plates that had different colors in it, fine. You show the rainbow, you know, uh, a gingerbread house, whatever you want. That's all, you know, who cares? Everybody carries that stuff. That was the one item. I've never seen one item make a difference like this. I think what's really compelling about what he says there is the question that I asked last week is what what's actually taking place in these boardrooms? Like that is a, a very weird thing to have made it out of the boardrooms, to have made it through all of the executives and they all agreed that this was a good idea. Like wh- why do you need to lean into it this much? Uh, What's actually happening? We talked about Target's very real history uh, being really the forefront of being supportive to the transgender movement. They were kind of the first big corporation to announce that men could use women's restrooms and women could use men's restrooms. And however you're identifying for that day, that is their policy. You can use whatever restroom you'd like to use in Target. But they, they have definitely upped the ante in this way to decide to be the first to not just sell it, but to really promote this and to, of course, then hire someone who identifies as a Satanist to promote it. Who is making these decisions? This becomes a question that parents need to ask themselves to really think deeply about this because this is not just a surface cultural conversation that we're having, okay? I have shared with you in this episode that right now we are being squeezed by YouTube. This is the one thing that YouTube wants us to capitulate to. It is the, the, the gender movement. They want us to look at a little girl and say, no, you are a little boy. And they want us to respect 
people's pronouns, uh, which to me, as I said at the top of the show, is they are asking us to tell a lie, right? They're saying if you want to make money on this platform, you have to agree to this lie. How is it that so many corporations and so many platforms and so many individuals with power are all pushing this exact same lie that represents such a small minority of the population? This isn't about love can't be about love and it can't be about acceptance. Don't be so stupid as to believe that this is about love and it's about acceptance and that Target really cares about a little child being feeling loved and accepted for every single word and phrase that they say. This is about something that is much more dangerous, something that is much more sinister. And it is going to take people being courageous and people having the ability to realize that we must put firm lines in the sand. And if we allow them to violate this one, which is our children being made susceptible to these lies, then they will have everything. There will be there will be nothing left for us to stand up to. And I say that to you from my heart as a mother who is just astonished at how far they have taken this ideology and how quickly and how deadly serious they are in threatening individuals that don't want to stand with it. As you guys know, faith is an essential part of my day. My family is always looking for ways to deepen our faith and grow closer to God, and that usually begins with prayer. But it can be hard to stick to a meaningful prayer routine, which is why we love Hallow. Hallow offers a wide range of guided meditations, thoughtful prayer sessions, and daily reflections that are designed to help you connect with God on a deeper level. With Hallow, you can customize your prayer experience by setting reminders, choosing a prayer theme, and even specifying the length of your prayer session. Hallow is helping me and thousands of others maintain a daily prayer routine, and it can help you too. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Candice. Not sure where to start? Check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year, available on the Hallow app for brief daily readings and reflections. Or you can pray alongside Mark Wahlberg or Jonathan Rumi, who portrays Jesus in the popular series, The Chosen. Get an exclusive three-month free trial at hallow.com slash Candice. That's hallow.com slash Candice. Hallow, the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. All right, guys, let's get into some of your comments on episodes past. First set of comments are regarding Lizzo. I obviously reported to you guys last week, very sadly, that Lizzo blocked me. And I was very shocked to discover this. I wasn't following her. I just was following the story that she was threatening uh, to quit her career and just go farm with her boyfriend. And I, by the way, I encourage that. Lizzo, that's wonderful. I, w- I would like to follow ballerina farm Lizzo version. You know, I would, just, I would love to see Lizzo out with the cattle and I don't know, like a hog farming. I don't know. I just, I, I love that. I, w- I would be a huge fan, Lizzo. So I don't want you to feel like that's a bad option. It's a great option. Katisha Jones writes, I'm a big black woman who has struggled with my weight most of my life. While I believe in loving me for who I am, I agree that being overweight should not be anyone's aim or platform. I also agree that it is immoral to run around with your butt out in public. It should be a shame. Just like all struggles, weight being one, no problematic health situation should be praised or championed. And you, Katisha, understand the point. And exactly what I said is this is not about shaming fat people. There are tons of other fat performers, fat artists, uh, fat actors, and we don't talk about them on this show because they haven't turned fat into a brand. They're not trying to promote fat as a healthy lifestyle, which it really is encouraging people to harm themselves. It's self-harm, you know? Uh, Just like there are individuals who are unhealthy because they're anorexic, at the moment that they start promoting promoting that, if these people were able to do a show, really picture this, a show like Lizzo had, uh, whatever it was called, This One's for the Big Girls, where she tried to find a bunch of other big fat girls uh, to become dancers. Imagine if an anorexic did that and said, this one's for the thin girls. And she lined up a bunch of anorexic people and said, you can be my dancer, you can be my dancer. It's unimaginable. We would not allow that because we should not allow that. We should not encourage people to harm themselves. And there is no shame, in my opinion, in having things that we need to better in our, we all have things that we need to better every single day. I know tons of people that are struggling uh, with their weight, but again, they, as you said, are not running around with their butts out in public. Next comment is from Dianesha Webster. She writes, personally, I think it is disgusting to dress or act that way, regardless of body size. Where has all the self-respect gone in our young women today? That is a major theme of this podcast. And like I said, I am an equal opportunity offender. I talk about Emily Rodzikowski as much as I talk about Lizzo. And Emily Emily Rodzikowski has what people believe to be a wonderful, perfect body, uh, which is why she's always naked. It is still disgusting. It is debauchery. And it it shows that she has no self-respect. And I would actually say that it's a form of self-loathing, that you don't believe that you have anything else to offer. 
Uh, so you offer your body and you say, well, at least I'm hot because people don't think that I'm smart uh, or that I have anything important to say. At least I can be cute. So I pity her too. I pity both of them. Jorge writes, I love Lizzo for her music. It makes me sad that we are now living in a world that makes women think that being vulgar liberates and empowers them. That is exactly the point. There is nothing liberating about that. Uh, people that think that it's liberating to be nude. And yeah, you will get people sliding into your DMs. You will get people that will give you a thumbs up. But if you, if you have a relationship with those individuals, you will realize they actually have no respect for you. Yeah, there are always going to be a man that wants to sleep with you, but not a man that will take you seriously. And that is the story of Emily Rajkowski. She got cheated on by her husband. Uh, not shocking because, as I have said in my view, she cheated on him. Putting your body constantly on the internet is just not a form of self-respect, and women need to do better. So anyways, those are my views, though. I'm a dinosaur. I'm basically a grandma. I spent the whole weekend making soup and tending to my garden. So what do I know? Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time that we have for today. As a reminder, A Shot in the Dark is available now on Daily Wire Plus, so be sure to click the link in the description and subscribe right now. Make sure to come back tomorrow because there will be a brand new episode.